Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we are revisiting our favourite GPU of this generation, the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. And that was, of course, sarcasm. I actually couldn't say that with an entirely straight face. But anyway, on the Harbour Unboxed podcast recently, over on the Harbour Unboxed podcast channel, funnily enough, our team and myself named the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte as the worst GPU of this generation. But that's not why we're looking at it here today, unfortunately. Rather, we're using it to represent the growing number of mid-range to low-end GPUs that don't fully utilize the PCI Express interface. But before we do... Today's video is sponsored by ASUS and their fantastic ROG Strix XG27 AQMR gaming monitor. If you're after a 27-inch 1440p display with super fast 300Hz capabilities, look no further than the XG27 AQMR. Packing variable overdrive and excellent response time tuning, this IPS LCD monitor offers great motion clarity for everything from fast-paced multiplayer games to the latest AAA blockbusters. In our review, we also found it to be quite a versatile display, with impressive colour accuracy and a decent range of colour controls, all at a mid-range price point. To learn more about the ASUS XG27 AQMR, click the link in the description below. Okay, so unlike the RTX 4090, 4080, 4070 Ti and 4070, the 4060 series doesn't use the x16 interface and is instead limited to x8 bandwidth. But it's not just Nvidia that does this. AMD has also limited the RX 7600 to eight times, though the more expensive 7700 XT does get the full time 16 bandwidth and everything else above it. So this limitation is a lot less egregious on AMD's side, given that the RX 7600 has an MSRP of just $270 US, whereas the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti has a $500 US MSRP. Now, this bandwidth limitation probably isn't an issue for those of you with a PCI Express 4.0 compatible system, as communications between your graphics card, CPU, and system memory happens at 15.8 gigabytes per second. The same bandwidth you'll receive when using a PCIe 3.0 graphics card with the full time 16 bandwidth, such as the RTX 2080 Ti, for example. However, if you install an RTX 4060 Ti, 4060 or RX 7600 an older system only supporting PCIe 3.0 such as an Intel 10th gen system then the bandwidth to these graphics cards is cut in half to just 7.9 gigabytes per second and this means there's the potential to negatively affect frame rates and this is a concern that countless viewers have brought to my attention since the introduction of these current generation mid-range to low-end graphics cards the primary concern is that because we test using the latest hardware, such as a PCIe 4.0 enabled system, or in our example, a PCIe 5.0 enabled system, that our system doesn't represent the kind of performance you might see when using an older PC limited to PCIe 3.0, for example. Now, I should note that cut down PCIe interfaces for lower end products, this isn't anything new. It's certainly not something that we approve of, and we have done our best to push back against this for quite a few years now, but despite our best efforts, nothing's really changed. The point though, being that we've done quite a bit of PCI interface testing in the past, and we found that it can affect performance for certain titles, but for the most part, it's really only a major problem when running out of VRAM, which is a problem in its own right anyway. Still, it has been a long time since I last did some PCIe bandwidth testing. So with the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte installed, I set about testing it using both PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 on our 7800 X 3D test system, as you can change the PCIe modes in the BIOS. In total, I've tested 44 games and some of them feature RT off and on, taking the grand total to 56 tested configurations all tested at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So let's get into the data. Starting with Star Wars Jedi Survivor, these results are pretty typical of what you can expect to see, that being basically no change in performance. Even with ray tracing enabled, we're seeing about the same thing, which is nothing. But as you're about to see, that's not always the case. For example, when testing with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, we see a massive decline in performance when limited to PCIe 3.0 bandwidth. At 1080p, the PCIe 4.0 configuration was 28% faster, hitting 498 FPS, opposed to just 390 FPS. 
Now, increasing the resolution, that does reduce this margin to 11%, but even at 4K, we're still seeing a 6% increase for the newer PCIe standard. We're also looking at a noteworthy performance difference in Spider-Man Remastered, where the PCIe 4.0 configuration boosted the average frame rate by 4% at 1080p, and the 1% lows by 12%. Again though, we see when upping the resolution that the GPU loads increased, and the more limited PCIe bandwidth is less of an issue. What's interesting though in this example is the ray tracing results. RTFX can increase CPU load, and at 1080p this has a real impact on performance, allowing the PCIe 4.0 configuration to deliver 18% more performance, and that is a massive increase for those of you trying to maximize frame rates when using ray tracing. Next up we have Hogwarts Legacy, and in this example we're looking at a 6% boost when using PCIe 4.0 at 1080p, and then a 10% increase for the 1% lows. But as we've seen previously, those margins almost disappear entirely at the higher 1440p and 4K resolutions. Enabling ray tracing does increase the margin at 1080p to 10% in favour of PCIe 4.0, while the margin for the 1% lows blew out to 19%, so a massive difference in performance there. Then at 1440p, we're still seeing a huge increase to the 1% lows for PCIe 4.0, though the average frame rate is much the same. Watch Dogs Legion is another game that shows a performance regression when using PCIe 3.0. For example, at 1080p, we see that PCIe 4.0 offers 10% more performance when comparing the average frame rate, and 5% more at 1440p. And then we see that the frame rate is low enough at 4K where the PCI bandwidth it's not really an issue. When testing with F123, we see that frame rates need to exceed 200 FPS in order for the PCI bandwidth to become an issue. So using the high preset at 1080p, we found that PCI 4.0 offers about 8% more performance, and then basically there's really no difference at 1440p and 4K. Then with the ultra high preset enabled, which turns on ray tracing, the RTX 4060 Ti is no longer driving enough frames to saturate the PCIe 3.0 bus. Next we have Fortnite, and here PCIe 3.0 wasn't a big issue for the 4060 Ti. We're looking at up to a 4% margin at 1080p, with no performance change at 1440p and 4K. Even with ray tracing enabled, the results are much the same, up to a 4% difference at 1080p, with no change at 1440p or 4K. Now of the 40 plus games tested, what we're seeing here in Ratchet and Clank is typically how the results turn out, and that is to say we find no difference between PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 for the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB, so performance here is basically identical, or really is identical at all three tested resolutions. Finally, the last game that we're going to look at the individual results for is Far Cry 6, and I had to triple check this one. At 1080p, we found that PCIe 4.0 offers 19% more performance, which is substantial, but it was the 16% increase we saw at 1440p that surprised me the most, well, that and the 12% increase at 4K. Then with ray tracing enabled, PCIe 4.0 is offering 18% more performance at 1080p, 19% more at 1440p, and then 11% more at 4K. So it would seem as though PCIe bandwidth is at a premium here, though I should stress that this certainly isn't the norm, and we'll look at that now. Okay, so here's the breakdown of all 56 configurations tested based on the 1080p resolution. On average, PCIe 4.0 provided 4% more performance, so across all of the games and configurations tested, the performance difference is very minor, with the vast majority of configurations seeing low single-digit margins. However, of the 56 configurations tested, eight of them saw a 10% margin or greater, with just four examples of 18% or more, though two of them were the same game, Far Cry 6. So in short, the only games to really see a massive performance difference included Far Cry 6, CSGO, and Spider-Man using ray tracing. As we saw in the number of examples that we've already looked at, as you increase the resolution, the frame rates are reduced, and as a result, the required PCI bandwidth, in a lot of instances, is also reduced. The only exception here was Far Cry 6, which behaves in a very unique way. We also saw a decent decline in performance for PCI 3.0 in CSGO, but in that example, frame rates were still very high. At the end of the day, we're looking at just a 2% increase on average for PCI 4.0 at 1440p.
Now at 4K, PCIe bandwidth for RTX 4060 Ti class GPUs isn't that important. And in a lot of examples, we're looking at sub 60 FPS performance. So you wouldn't be running at such a high resolution with that sort of GPU anyway, at least not with the quality settings that we were using. So there you have it, PCI Express bandwidth for the most part, it's not a huge issue. And although we'd much prefer GPUs such as the RTX 4060 Ti include the full time 16 interface, Times 8 is generally sufficient, even for those of you with older systems limited to PCIe 3.0. That said, for those of you playing competitive shooters and are trying to drive as many frames as possible, ensuring support for PCIe 4.0 will be more important. Though in those examples, CPU performance is also extremely important, so there's a very good chance that you'll be on a platform that supports PCIe 4.0 anyway. Now look, you could point to unique examples such as Far Cry 6 and claim that this is a major issue, as it certainly is in that example, but as I said, that's a unique example, at least amongst the massive range of games that I've tested here. That said though, for those of you interested in ray tracing, we did see a few examples where enabling ray tracing did increase PCIe traffic, such as Spider-Man Remastered and Hogwarts Legacy, for example. I guess the point is parts like the 4060 Ti, which are limited to times eight bandwidth, will fare a bit worse on older PCIe 3.0 systems compared to what we show with our 7800X3D test system. They'll also fare a bit worse relative to Time 16 products, such as the RTX 4070 or 7700 XT, for example. So it's a bit crap that AMD and Nvidia cut corners here in an effort to maximize their margins. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please do get a thumbs up. Uh, you can also subscribe for more content if you haven't done that already, because we will have some new GPU content coming up on the channel very shortly. So anyway, subscribe, like, do that stuff, the YouTube things. Also, if you'd like more Harbour Unbox goodness, we do have Floatplane Patreon. Signing up to either one of those things will give you access to exclusive content, such as a monthly live stream to myself, get together in person, answer your questions live. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we also have an exclusive Discord server. Uh, we do behind the scenes content, Q&A stuff, a lot of cool stuff there. So check it out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And just finally, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.